I want to first of all begin tonight on this Wednesday night. First of all, glad to have each and every one back. Um, sorry when we were unable to have our services on Sunday because of the storm we had, but we're glad to have you here in at Highest Praise tonight. And those of you that are viewing on the slide, we want to thank you for tuning in to tonight's service. And as we go into tonight's service, I want to also take the opportunity to invite folks that are viewing us because um, we do get a lot of comments of people that see in our services. I invite you to come to Highest Praise. If you're looking for a church that believes in the Bible, that that's what we stand firm on and that's what we teach and that's what we live by, then Highest Praise would love to have you come join us. I, I, I want to tell you before I even go into the, tonight, um, which the title of the message is I Am the Bread of Life. This is a, the, several times in the Bible Jesus said, I am and I just want to, I want us to start, I want to start teaching about who is I am and about how we need to understand what God's word says. But as, uh, as I was at the funeral today and listening, I was really surprised and at so many people that whenever they talked about the church, even ministers, it was, it was, well, it shouldn't be shocking, but it, I was surprised when they kept saying, well, pray for our church. We're about to split. Pray for our church. We, um, you know, we, we, we got one in it that wants to change this, and we got one minister that wants to change this, and, and we like it this way, and we like it this way. And, and, I, was, and, and I was like, wow. I said, your problem of this is y'all are running the church instead of God. Yeah. I said, y'all need to get back to the I am, and that's not you. <laughs> But, you know, it, it, it brought me the realization to realize that church that uh, Satan is, is, he's basically destroying the church. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you, Satan's not going in there and sitting down. He's using the church to destroy the church. Yeah. And, and even when I, I, I saw a family today that says, well, we just give up our church. We just give it up. And I was like, wow. How do you give up God? Yeah. I mean... I mean, come on, that's, that's, that should be out of our equation. That's, what, that's why it's so important to us to stick to the Word of God. Listen, you, a minister never has to make no apologies if he sticks to the Word of God. And, uh, and when we do that, God says that His Word won't come back void, but also says if we do it His way, that we will be in His will, and He will bless that church. And, and, and I want to go on record to say tonight that, that we need to get back to the I Am. Um, I believe 2017 will be just what we make it. If we don't change anything in the church and we keep doing just what we're doing, we're just going to ba barely get through. But I believe if we see, and this is the key thing, I believe if we recommit ourselves to the church, then God will step up in his commitment to us. But long as we're satisfied where we're at, God's going to leave us where we're at. So I, I, don't know what you, I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed. I want the God to use me to, to bless my family, to reach my family. I, I want this church to be blessed. I don't want everybody to go from year to year to year saying, well, nothing's changed. Everything's about the same. I'm still broke, busted, and disgusted, sad, lonely, and depressed. Every year is about the same. Well, you know what? It's time that we realize that we can change that. And we can change it by letting church be um, a part of a commitment to our life. The, you know, the Bible tells us, and I want to go on, that I am the bread of life. Who said I am the bread of life? Jesus, because he said in John 6, 35, and, and if you got your Bibles, if you'd like to turn along in, in your scriptures in John 6, 35, and, or you can look up on the screen, but he says, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Now, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. I like that. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never hunger thirst he that do what believeth on me shall never thirst how do you believe on jesus you believe his word that's what he's saying see my, um in fact there's a couple of i am's i just want to share just to begin this series uh moses has said in exodus put exodus three fourteen up there uh, moses had said and god said unto moses i am that i am does anybody have a problem with that? I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. 
He told him three times. Okay, let me tell you something, Moses. You're not going to them to tell them anything, but I am. And see, that's where we're messing up in, in, in churches because, see, so many people, it's, it's about me, 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 me. Listen, church, it's not about you. It's, it's about God. Jesus also shocks his hearers uh, whenever the, he tells them about I am. Uh, in fact, a lot of people don't know this, but before Abraham was, Jesus, even God said, I am, before Abraham. In John 8, 58, he said, Jesus said unto, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And, and, and he said, I want to drive this I am to you because, see, before Abram, Abraham was in the beginning, right? But who was here before, who was the I am before Abraham? That's right. Jesus, Jesus made this statement in John 5, 58. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate the two. Cannot separate them. You got to have them all in a package. And, and they all carry out a purpose like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They all got a purpose, but they're all in a trinity united together. His enemies then wanting to stone Abraham for, I mean, Jesus, whenever they made that statement about Jesus says that I am. In fact, the eighth I am statement by Jesus was spoken of in John 7 in the Gospel of John, by the way, and 1 in the book of Revelations. The first I am decoration, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I don't want us to just take a, if we're going to learn something tonight, I want us to learn about what the bread of life really means. What does this statement mean? truly mean when he says, I am the bread of life. How does this, or how is this going to apply to you and I today? Well, first of all, I want you to understand something. Jesus is the source of life. Listen, I don't care whether you believe in, in Jesus, whether you believe that God created you, or believe that you run in around with a bunch of atoms that finally hit each other and exploded into a human being. I don't care what you think. Listen, God created you. Amen. Jesus is the source of life. In fact, in John 1, 3, I'm going to keep the scriptures on you. John 1, 3, because it don't matter what I tell you. You can say, well, that preacher up now told me this. But listen, you can't argue with God. So what, what I'm going to show you in these scriptures is about Jesus uh, said, he said, all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. All right, while that scripture's up there, does anybody have a problem with this? All things were made by him, okay? All things, that's including you. You weren't cloned, you just didn't happen to pop up after 10 million years of rotating around, crawling around, swinging in trees, acting like monkeys, or whatever the case may be. Jesus said, he said, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. See, that's, that's why people don't like the Scriptures, because the Scriptures messes up theory. The evolution theory. Why they put theory? It's because they don't really know. But we know, don't we, church? We know that Jesus is the source of life. All plant and animal life, because he said all things. Does that mean plants? Does that mean animals? Think about this. All right, all things were made by him, right? Okay, so if all things were made by him, did he make horses? Donkeys, everything that crawls, everything that, everything, right. Well, so if he made all the animals and stuff, and so that he made, did he make you and I? Okay, God didn't make apes and say, well, maybe one day they'll learn to walk. Just hang in there. They'll start walking, and then they're going to start talking, and then all of a sudden they're going to be sending people to the moon. No, God made everything for a purpose and a plan because God had it all already figured out. He's in charge of all human life. See, in fact, you know why I know he's in charge of human life? In him was life. John 1, 4, the next verse says, in him was what? Life. And the life was the light, of, the light of who? Okay, so, all right, listen. That's something, all human life was created by God. He said it. Listen, he didn't say that in him was life, and the life was in the light of monkeys, apes. No, he said men. That's, that's 
That's the creation that God created. And, you know, just because we act like we have no sense, just because half the people are walking around head banging and acting stupid and looking like monkeys, doesn't mean God made them that way. See, God gave us, was, and the life was in the light of men. We're talking about the bread of life. The life was in us. The light is. The light regards for life in the Bible. What's, what's in you? The Word of God. See, today's departure from that position is, is by the way we talk about life. What is life? It's, it's, it's what you are. It's, it's as you live. Just like, you know, when my dad, life. But then, then he died. But there's still life. Not the flesh of life but a, another life. Now, now, let's look at how this world regards what the Bible says about life. Today's de, uh, departure from that position, abortion. Ending life before God's time for birth. Anybody knows anything about abortion? And uh, look, that's the sin. The bottom line of it is, is, is we're trying to tell people, get rid of it. Before you have it, it's nothing. No. It's not what life is. That life is born inside of you because it's a creation of God. And we live in a society right now that is do, departing from God's word. How about euthanasia? Anybody familiar with that? Any life before God's time for death? How about when uh, 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 in, in Germany and, and, and Russia? How about when all this, the Holocaust and all this? Let me tell you something. This is against God's word. Whenever we take life in our own hands, it hang in there because we're in a society now that when people reach a certain age that they're non-productive, they're no good. In fact, if you want to go back and just address Hitler, if somebody was born that had an illness, he'd kill them because they were not worth anything. I'm serious. And, look, and, and let me tell you something. That's about as Satan as you can get. Yeah. And see, Jesus is, is the bread of life. See, we live in a society right now that has totally moved away from what God calls uh, the source of life. is not your breathing. It's Jesus. Life is from the Lord and should be sacred. Jesus also is a sustainer of life. See, when we're talking about the bread of life, bread is what? Anybody like Bread. Tell you what, don't send me to no steakhouse with all that, that honey butter and, and them rolls. I'm going to tell you what's true. I'll be full before they bring the steak. We like bread because bread is food and it's vital for us to sustain life. He says, I'm the bread of life. So what does food do? Helps you sustain life. So what does Jesus say? I'm the bread. I am the bread of life. Means I am what sustains you, and and, and that's what I, I I love about. It. He says I am what feeds you. Food. No one's strong enough to live long without food. If you don't believe me, watch a show I watch. Watch Survivor Man. He gets so hungry he eats things. I I'd have to die first. I look at what he's doing. I'm thinking, dude, I'd have to be desperate, desperate, desperate. I'm telling you, I'd say, well, Lord, it's time for me to come home. Because some of them critters running around, they grab off a tree. Oh, look, 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 look. This little white worm. I'm going, well, I'd die right there on the spot. I'm going to tell you right now, boy, something wiggling going down my throat. It's over. But, you know, you'll find out, and people have done in drastic measures, that when they're starving, you'd be surprised what people will do to sustain that life. See, when food runs out, Life soon ends. Uh, let's, let's, let's look at anorexia. What's anorexia? The, the victims die every day because they refuse to eat. I'm serious. And, and, and they die from it. Why? It's because food is vital to their existence. God provides food for life. And even, I'm not talking about spiritual food. Look, how about children of Israel? Um, manna in the desert. He, su he supplied their food. Elijah sustained by a widow during a famine. See, we need to understand that God supplies our needs also to feed us. But what's more important is we need to look at Jesus' gives and that, that, life, that eternal life that sustains. He, see, that's that bread of life. Jesus came here 
in Bethlehem. You might not know this about Bethlehem, but when we're talking about the bread of life, the bread of life was born in Bethlehem. Now, also, if you know anything about, uh, well, uh, in fact, Malachi 5.2 tells us about the bread of life, but you, you're not going to catch it when I read your scripture. But listen to this. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, thou that be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. It was foretold. That's where he was coming from, and that's, and that's what come to pass. But do you know when we mention Bethlehem, if you look up, Bethlehem is also known as the place of bread. So it wasn't a coincidence that he, Jesus says, I am the what? Bread of life. No, it's no coincidence that he was born in Bethlehem, which was known by the place of bread. Look, let's think about communion. What do we do? Communion. Communion bread symbolizes Jesus' broken body. There's one verse of scripture that, that proves it, 2, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. Now I want you to understand, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my what? Which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. The bread of life. See, when we understand Jesus told them in John that I am the bread of life, that we need to understand um, this bread of life is for every one of us. And how, how do we receive this bread of life? He says, that he that cometh to me in no wise will I cast out. Right? All who come to him receive this bread of life. And see, that's why it's so important for me to convince my family. So important to realize that, listen, you've got to receive this bread of life. You've got to receive the bread of life, which is Jesus, because, listen, we're all going to die. We're all, it's appointed to us all. But listen, people get this. We stay more focused on these families in the flesh and listen, if, we, if they don't know Jesus and receive the bread of life, their, their eternity we will know nothing about. Our family, our eternal families is those that have what? Received the bread of, of, of life, e eternal life. And, and that's why I told my family, I said, look, y'all don't get this. See, you, you love each other and you say you love each other and... and and, and you, you, you carry on with these family reunions and stuff, but you don't realize something. All these families that you can't live without, if y'all if don't know Jesus, it's over. Think about that a second. All these family reunions and all these get-togethers, if they don't know Jesus and they leave this earth and don't receive the bread of life, we won't know them. But we will know those that are the eternal family. So how much do you love your family? We better give them that bread of life. I told my family in, 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 in the service today, one of the last things I said, because I said, Lord, I know that we just got a, a graveside, but I said, I, I want your will to be done. More than what I'm trying to do for my family, I said, I need to do because you're God. And I'm here for a bigger pur pur purpose than doing a funeral. And I told him, I said, you know, I, I waited too late to tell my daddy I, I love him. I said, because I waited too late. I said, but in retrospect, just like Jesus, if we don't accept Jesus Christ and we wait, we could wait till it's too late. And if we don't accept Jesus Christ, it will be too late. And then all that we thought we had will be gone. And I told him, I said, and I, I wanted them to know that if family is so important to you all, if, so, if family is so important to each other, and we are crying and we're weeping over what's going on, why are we crying? Because apparently because we love someone. Why, why, why are we going through these emotions if we miss the basic principles of, of why we're here? we're here? We're here to say, look, if this person knows Jesus, they receive the bread of life but if you listen and you cry and you and you carry on and if you don't receive jesus you'll never see him again yeah. Yeah. and i and i wanted i wanted them to know that because see jesus is the bread of life jesus you, you, all jesus says is you just have to receive yeah. 
and, 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 he, and he don't make, no, make it hard for you. It's, it's just bread there. That bread of life is Jesus. And he that cometh to me, in no wise, he says, he'll cast out. And all to come to him, they receive salvation. And I want my family to know more than anything, if you can eat all the fleshly food, food you want to. But when it comes to that day, if you haven't eaten the bread of life, you're going to be eternally lost. Church, I want you to know that Jesus says, I am the bread of life because Jesus gives satisfaction in life. I want you to understand that Jesus gives satisfaction in life. Look, let me tell you something. Once you accept Jesus Christ, you've received the bread of life. But that bread of life is so much more important than anything you ever could imagine. Because why? It's because not only does he, he satisfy your hunger eternally, he, sh he says, shall never hunger. See, Christ satisfies all inner desires. Whenever you have the bread of life, your desire sings. All other sources are, fail to satisfy us in this world. Let me tell you something. You can get all the wealth. You can get all the fame. You can get all the success. But all that's going to fail if you don't have the bread of life. Jesus also satisfies inner thirst he said thou shalt not only you shall never hunger but he says you shall never thirst inner thirst sends some to and when i say inner thirst let me explain to you what i'm saying uh inner thirst is the desires and temptations and the things we have going on inside of us see that's why a lot of people church really some people turn to alcohol and other drugs because there's an inner thirst what do I mean by inner thirst? Jesus said, shall never thirst. That means that, that he will come in and take place of the desires that your flesh has by giving you spiritual desires, by replacing all this mess that people, these inner desires where people are just out there trying to trying their best to fulfill that desire inside of them, and you won't fulfill it. You'll end up empty without Jesus. You know, I tried everything out there there was, and the only thing that finally filled me with Jesus and see that's what we want the world to know I, I don't want to keep doing funerals and, and, and have to hope that we got to them in, just in time I, I, I want you to know that Jesus says I'm the bread of life that is, he wants you to live now uh, and look, Jesus wants us to live right now. He wants us to live overcoming right now. And if, and if we let Jesus be the source of our life and the sustainer of our life and also the one that satisfies us in life, that means Jesus will supply all our needs now. And, 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 that's, and look, I tell everybody, I didn't make it through this funeral today. Jesus did. He sustained me, as I told you in part two. Jesus sustained me because he's in me. See, when Satan, anybody, anybody get attacked by Satan? In fact, I don't care how far you run, you can't hide. That's why you need to have the bread of life inside of you because we, we fight these battles and Satan tried to throw everything at me. But see, I, I, I realize, see, I received the bread of life. And that's that bread where I never hunger or I never thirst for the, the desires of the flesh. And, that, and when Satan throws this mess up with me, you know, the Bible he says, it is written, man shall not live by, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, right? So listen, whenever Satan attacks you like he attacked me throughout this whole thing with my family, you know, I kept saying, listen, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Oh, you can't get up there. You can't do this. You want, let, let me tell you something. The bread of life is eternal. He's not taking it back because you're going through a hard time. In fact, whenever you're going through a, a time where you feel like you're, you're spiritually starving, he gives you some more food. Amen. I'm telling you, it's, it, it's, it's like when, a, when you're feeding a baby, and if they ain't, they ain't full, they'll let you know, right? Well, real quick, and I'm going to go on, there's an alarm system that sounds just ear-piercing. But you plug that bottle in them lips, boy, they'll shut right up and start grinning. And, and, but when they're full, guess what they do? They're just satisfied. Whoo, I'm glad. See, that's the way it is. Whenever you're spiritually down, whenever you feel like you can't go one more step, anybody been there? Whenever you feel like you just, I can't go no further, the Lord says, 
hey, Greg needs some more food. Let's give him some more spiritual food. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, God will always be on time and on target. See, and, and that uh, sanctification that he gives and that, and that fruitfulness he gives, Satan can't touch it. Church, and, and, he, and he loses the battle whenever we just totally surrender and trust in him whenever we're going through something. When I'm spiritually thirst, um, I know the Lord just gives me something. And people say, how did, that, how did you get through it? I said, I didn't. Jesus got through it. See, this inner thirst that we just talked about sends some people to lust and greed. This inner thirst. What's the inner thirst? Well, if you haven't got Jesus, let me tell you what the inner thirst is. The desires of the world. The lust and greed, all these desires of the world, and none of these, none of these will satisfy you. Because I tell you right now, I never, ever, in my worst state, ever drunk enough alcohol that I was, I'm satisfied. I've never met anybody that took enough drugs that said, well, I feel good now. You know why? Because, see, you'll never carry out that fullness until you realize who brought you here. We started out with I am the bread of life. We showed you that Jesus Christ created every one of us. If, if, if we were created by God, then that God created us to be filled with something, Absolutely. not with sin. Absolutely. Sin is what's destroying you. Whenever we receive the bread of life, that bread of life soaks up that stuff. Have you ever, have you ever put, have you ever, I know y'all don't do this stuff. You ever get gravy on something and you get them biscuits and you sop it? Lord, have mercy. I believe that's when you can eat all the biscuits you want. Or if, or, or, or if, if you're like me as a kid, our desserts was molasses. And if you eat your food, food real good, them three finger biscuits, they let you have another one. Well, you didn't get but one because there was a lot of kids to feed. But we'd wallow that biscuit out. I mean, we would wallow that joker out to just the lining. <laughs> we'd have that thing so full, we bit that rascal. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something. That stuff would just pour out. Molasses would go everywhere. And then you had to have something else to sop it. I need one more biscuit. I, I got... You can't waste that food. Good, give me another biscuit. Well, see, whenever you're going through what you're going through spiritually, see, the, the Lord is just like that. Whatever you're going through, the Lord will give you the food you need to absorb what you're going through. And, and, and that lust and stuff is, is like something that you never can get enough of. See, true satisfaction is found only in Jesus Christ. And the reason why this Wednesday night, this is so important for us to understand, is that all through the Bible, Jesus talked about, I am, I am, I am. And I told you, he was had seven times in John and one time in the book of Revelations. But as we look at these, we need to realize that Jesus didn't say that so he could prove who he was or who he is. He wanted you to learn something from it. Quit feeding yourself. We need to quit feeding ourselves so much of the world and start feeding ourselves more of the word. Because I'm going to tell you something, church. And, and, and you can take this to the bank. If you start feeding yourself more of this. Because of who's in you. You will feel better. You will overcome things stronger. I mean, everything that you has been defeating you. Will stop winning the battle. Because of what you're feeding yourself. Some people kill me. They say, I'm depressed. I can't hardly stand it. I, I, can't, I don't even want to go out of the house. And you go to their house, and they're watching soap operas. They're watching stuff that shouldn't be even on television. I mean, give you an example. See, that's why people are, are in the mess they are, because they're feeding themselves the wrong stuff. Look, growing up, here's what violence was. Anybody remember Aaron, Andy Griffin? You remember Obi when, um, when the goat ate dynamite? Y'all ever? Before your time, okay. All right. 
And, 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 and that was violence when they thought the goat exploded. We never saw the goat explode. All we heard was a boom outside of town. And that was what we called violence. Now let me tell you what violence is this day and time. They don't only show the goat exploding. They will show body parts slinging everywhere. They, they, they will show them cutting everything off. and I mean, they, they leave nothing for your imagination. Because it's so much. And, so, and, and that's what's wrong. You know, back then, we didn't have what you call nightmares. Unless you were afraid of a goat exploding. But boy, what we feed ourselves now, it's no wonder we don't have psychiatrists making billions and billions of dollars. Sit down and let me tell you why you feel like you do. Let's go back to your childhood and, and, and live through it. Yeah, you can find out when they left Andy Griffin and went to Criminal Mind or whoever. Then now I see what's your problem. See, I would love for someone to say, well, look, let me tell you what's your problem. You're feeding yourself too much garbage. Yeah. You become a garbage truck. Yeah. You need to dump that garbage, and we need to get our minds back on Jesus. I'm telling you, our young people would not be in the mess they were in right now if we would start feeding them the Word of God. Well, Pastor, it's just not popular to, to do this. Well, let me tell you something. When your child's out there strung out on meth and heroin and crack, and you're praying for somebody to reach that child before he dies, I tell you, you'll rethink it. Let me see. How did that child learn how to do drugs? Well, I just woke up one morning, and, and I just had this vision. I, I needed to go do some drugs. I was in Bible college, and, and we learned about that stuff. I was Wednesday night, Sunday, Wednesday night service, and the preacher talked about how, how to do drugs and succeed. No. They learn it in this world. They were fed this mess. No matter how they got it, they were fed it. We're, we're supposed to be feeding them. If we're the bread of life, we're supposed to be feeding that bread, Jesus, to everyone else. But even with my grandchildren, I love dearly. And let me tell you something. When they're doing what they're doing, I'm like, okay. I, and, and people get mad at me, and, and it's quite all right. It won't be the first time. But you have to, I look at them, I say, where did they learn this? Well, um, they might have heard it from us. Oh, okay. They might have they seen us doing it. I told him to lock that liquor cabinet when he was finished. I told him to put his drugs where nobody couldn't find them. I'm serious, guys. I'm, not, I, I'm telling you, this is, see, this is why Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the source of life. I am what sustains you. And, and if we could get that back in our minds, listen, you say, well, you don't have to live in a real world. Oh, really? Where do you think I live? Amen. Let me go on and tell you, my TV is just like yours. Amen. Okay? Them same demons that run around your neighborhood run around ours. In fact, some of them's closer by us than probably some of y'all. <laughs> but you know what? What should be the difference is what you allow yourself to eat. Yeah. Here's, here's the deal. My, my wife just come back to, from the doctor. She, she went, and they said her, her blood pressure was a little bit uh, not right, and her cholesterol was a little bit not right. Guess what the first thing she said? <laughs> and I, I knew this was going to happen. I've got to start starving myself to death because of her. No, what's going to happen is this. <laughs> We went to eat. I'm not eating that. That, that, that. That'll make your cholesterol go up. Lord have mercy. And then I, I went somewhere before I got here. Uh, I'm not eating none of that because that'll, that, that'll make your blood your cholesterol go up. Uh, I'm going to stop drinking this and I'm going to stop doing this. Do you know why? It's because, see, there was a signs that she was heading in her direction. And when the doctor says, look, you better cut that out because look, 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 here's, here's your signs. Uh-oh, I got to quit. Well, let me tell you something. Sin, whenever you're losing the battle, whenever your child or, or you're being messed up, you better say, uh-oh, wait a minute. What, what does the great physician tell me? Well, you better go back to the Word because you got too much of the world. That's why you're messed up. That's why your marriage is messed up. That's why your children messed up. D here's a warning sign just like they give Joan. Well, I better stop doing this. I better go back to the Word of God. Well, preacher, that's just not popular. That's a mouthful because it's not. 
That's why today when I heard the people talking about the, the, the trouble their church was in, it was so funny. Well, we just, we just can't find nobody, nobody that, that wants to do it our way. We, 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 everybody that comes in here wants to try to change something. Everybody that comes in here wants to take our names off our seats. Everybody we bring in here is trying, is trying to, to bring the young people in the church. Everybody that comes in here is trying to run the old people out of the church. See, listen, Jesus didn't say Greg is the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. I told him, I said, look, I know y'all don't like me. You never did. So it's quite all right. But if y'all would get out of the way and let God send somebody and quit telling them as, and when you bring them into church, can I get real second? I didn't mean to preach on Wednesday. But let me tell you something. I said, if y'all would quit handing them what you want him to do and just let God show him what to do. But, 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 but we can't do that. We got, we got a pulpit committee in, and, and we got this committee in, and we got this committee in. We got this committee. I said, yeah, well, get all your committees out of the way and let God have it. Amen. But you know what? They won't let the bread of life feed them. And I tell you something. When I, when I look at the, the children, even, even today on the news about this, this child, it was shocking. This man paid, tried to pay a friend to kick this woman that was pregnant and about to have a child. He, told, he paid her him to kick her in the stomach so she'd have an abort, abort the child. Can, can I tell you from the old school <laughs> what someone once told me? Here's what he said. In fact, John Hagee said it. He said, you ain't worth the powder it would cost to shoot you. I didn't say it. that was John Hay. <laughs> but that's what happens when we feed ourselves full of the word. Because if, if this person was full of this, let me tell you what he'd do. He'd be following God's standards. I, I, he'd be following the Lord instead of finding the ways to destroy. Who's, who's seeking out to destroy? Anybody know him? Yeah. Satan, the Bible says that. So, But listen, if we've got the right food in us, If we've got the right food in us, I'm going to tell you something, church. If you've got the right food in you, God will use you to feed other people. That's what I want that you to understand as we close. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He says, I am the bread of life. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus says, if you come to him, he says, you shall never hunger and you shall never thirst. That means that he will satisfy every need that we've got. And he also, what some people don't never grasp with this, the thing about cheeseburgers and, 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 and Diet Cokes, Jesus is talking about spiritually. See, I, it took me a long time to figure that out. I was like, Lord, say, say, you know, if I eat from the bread of life, I said, okay, that, your word. But he said, no, Greg. He says, when you receive the bread of life, he said, I am the bread of life. When you receive me, he says, I'll, he says what's inside of you will cause you never to hunger for the world. Yeah, right. I, don't, yeah. I, don't hunger, I don't hunger for alcohol. Yeah. I don't hunger for drugs. Is anybody, anybody still with me? See, I don't hunger for lust. I don't hunger yeah. for the flesh. Because yeah. he said, you won't hunger no more. And he said, you won't thirst after the desires yeah. of this world. Yeah. And I finally got it. I said, oh, okay, you took away the, the, the only thing that could keep me from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, I want us to walk out as it, we're not, just remember, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So he is saying that if you're going through something that's bringing you down, trying to destroy you, the greatest thing you can do is turn off your TV and feed yourself some word mm -hmm. because God can't lie. He said, I will, you won't hunger. You get more word, you'll be satisfied. What a late, what a late loss, weight loss program. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what, why people call it fasting? <laughs> they don't fast the word of God. They fast the desires of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know why Jesus defeated Satan in Matthew 4? 
because he starved the flesh to death. Forty days and forty nights he fasted in Matthew 4. Read the Bible. And when he got to, anybody fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, by the way? <laughs> You're still here. I can tell you, you haven't. <laughs> so here's what I'm saying to you. He defeated the greatest enemy you ever will have because he did what? He starved the flesh to death and he fed himself. The bread of life. Because he is the bread of life. And he got everything in the world. See, he was born a child. Y'all think Jesus just popped up. Oh, I'm Jesus. He was born just like every one of you were. He was raised just like a child. He went through all this stuff. And, he, and, and, and then he came to his own. So he had to get rid of all that stuff that he'd been raised in. All that flesh. But when he showed us that I'm the bread of life, he meant that you just take me, put down this other stuff, and no matter what the enemy does, we'll defeat him. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. So we can win the battle, church. We can win the battle. I'm going to, let me tell you, I'm going to go on record. Say, I'm going to win this battle with my family. Yeah. They don't know it, but they, they done lost this battle because I'm going to feed myself the power I need to defeat that enemy. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going through something tonight, yeah. if you believe anything that God's Word says, open up that Bible, yeah. read it, mm -hmm. and get you some strength. Yeah. I'm telling you, you will overcome what you're facing. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you that you are the bread of life. You said, I am, I am, I am, I am. That means that we don't need no one else. We just need to put our faith and trust in you. You've already given us your word, the inspired word of God. You've already given us what we need. And Jesus, you've already paid the price, defeated the enemy, and give us authority. When we receive the bread of life, we receive authority. We receive power. Lord, if we just could open our eyes and grasp what that means, then we would overcome and Victory after victory, no matter what we're going through. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to open our eyes to who you are so that we can understand who we are as well. I pray tonight as we close for every need, physical, mental, spiritual. Help us to shut our fleshly eyes and open our spiritual eyes to the necessity of your word in our lives so that we can reach a lost and dying world Lord, I'm so tired of seeing young people committing suicide, cutting drugs and alcohol. I don't want that for my grandchildren, Lord. So help us to be the bread of life that they need to help them overcome. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you all.